It was one of the worst maritime disasters in history, the sinking of the British passenger ship Lusitania by a German submarine on May 7, 1915. Nearly 1,200 people, including 123 Americans, were killed. Deep off the coast of Ireland, a metal giant lies broken on the seabed, the RMS Lusitania. Most people think they know its story, a tragedy that pushed America toward a massive conflict. But the thing nobody tells you is that the official narrative is full of holes. Now an AUV armed with next generation LIDAR has entered the decaying vessel, scanning its every hidden corner. It found more than just rust and ghosts. The data it collected is genuinely terrifying, exposing a second mysterious event that sealed the ship's fate and the fate of everyone on board. The 100X Revelation for more than a century, the RMS Lusitania has rested in near total darkness, a silent monument to a past tragedy lying around 300 feet beneath the turbulent surface of the Atlantic. The pressure at that depth is over 130 pounds per square inch, enough to crush an ordinary vessel. You see, this is a place where secrets can stay buried forever, but technology has a way of shining a light in the darkest of places. A state-of-the-art autonomous underwater vehicle, AUV, was recently deployed on a mission that would rewrite history. This wasn't just any submarine. It was equipped with a revolutionary LiDAR system, a technology that uses laser pulses to create breathtakingly detailed three-dimensional maps. This system was a hundred times more powerful than anything that had ever scanned the wreck before. The AUV, named the Odyssey, began its methodical descent. On the screens in the control room, the murky green of the water slowly faded to an inky, impenetrable black. The only thing visible was the data streaming back from the submersible. At 200 feet, the first ghostly outlines began to appear. By 300 feet, the full scale of the wreckage materialized on the screens and the control room fell silent. It was a digital ghost rising from its grave. The Lusitania, a vessel that was once over 750 feet long, was a mangled, twisted ruin. The most shocking fact is the sheer violence of the damage. The LiDAR scan, accurate down to the inch, showed how the ship's bow had crumpled and how a massive section of its hull had been peeled back like a tin can. But the Odyssey's mission wasn't just to map the exterior, its primary goal was to go inside. The AUV navigated through a gaping hole in the hull, a wound that has been open to the sea for over 100 years. The interior was a labyrinth of collapsed decks, dangling wires and ghostly corridors. The LiDAR painted an eerie picture, revealing dining rooms where chandeliers now lay shattered on the silk-covered floor and hallways that led to nowhere. The ship, once the pinnacle of luxury, was now a chaotic underwater graveyard. As the Odyssey ventured deeper, it approached the forward cargo hold, the area of the ship that holds the key to its biggest controversy. For decades, survivors reported hearing two distinct detonations, not one. The official story only accounts for the single projectile from the German U-boat. So, what was the second one? The LiDAR began scanning the cargo area and what it revealed was stunning. The system mapped a pattern of destruction that was completely inconsistent with a single external impact. The scan showed metal plating bent outwards away from the cargo hold. This was the digital smoking gun, evidence of a massive internal blast that tore the ship apart from the inside. The footage was chilling. The AUV had just confirmed the Lusitania was carrying a secret, and it was this secret that sealed its doom. What the drone found next was even more unsettling. Before the catastrophe. To understand the horror of the AUV's discovery, one first has to understand what the Lusitania was. It wasn't just a ship, it was a symbol of an era. Launched in 1906, it was one of the fastest and most luxurious ocean liners in the world. Imagine a five-star hotel that could cross the Atlantic in less than five days, a feat that was almost unheard of at the time. Its interiors were dripping with opulence, grand staircases, palm courts, and first-class suites that were more lavish than most mansions. The thing nobody tells you is that this luxury was built for a reason. The British government had secretly subsidized its construction with one condition, in the event of a global conflict, the Lusitania could be converted into an armed merchant cruiser. Its power was immense. The ship's turbines generated nearly 70,000 horsepower, pushing it through the water at an incredible 25 knots, or about 29 miles per hour. For a vessel weighing over 44,000 tons, this was lightning fast. Many people were crazy about its speed, believing it was too fast for any German U-boat to catch. 
This sense of security was, tragically, a complete illusion. By May of 1915, the world had changed. The great conflict in Europe was in full swing, and Germany had declared the waters around the British Isles a zone of engagement, explicitly warning passengers that any ship flying the British flag was a target. Despite the clear and present danger, the Lusitania departed from New York on May 1st with nearly 2,000 people on board. The passengers, a mix of British, Canadian, and American citizens, largely ignored the warnings. They trusted in the ship's speed and the belief that a civilian passenger liner would never be targeted. What many overlooked was the political climate. Britain was desperate to draw the United States into the conflict, and some historians have argued that putting American citizens in harm's way was a calculated risk. On May 7th, as the Lusitania neared the coast of Ireland, it entered the very waters prowled by German U-boats. The ship was enveloped in a thick fog, forcing its captain, William Turner, to reduce speed. This was a fateful decision. Around 2.10 in the afternoon, the German submarine U-20 spotted the colossal liner. It fired a single naval projectile. The impact was devastating, but what happened next is what has fueled a century of debate. 18 minutes. That's all it took for the 750-foot marvel of engineering to slip beneath the waves, taking with it 1,200 souls. But the new LiDAR data proves this wasn't a simple sinking. A secret in the hold. At the heart of the Lusitania mystery is one simple question. What was in the cargo hold? For a hundred years, the official story from both British and American authorities was that the ship was carrying nothing more than civilian passengers and general cargo. But here's the kicker. This was a carefully constructed lie. The ship's manifest, which was eventually made public, listed items like cheese, furs, and brass rods. But it also listed thousands of cases of cartridges. Officials claimed these were simply small arms ammunition for sporting purposes. But the new LiDAR scans from the Odyssey AUV tell a very different story. The internal detonation pattern mapped by the LiDAR points to a secondary blast of incredible force. The scans allowed researchers to create a three-dimensional model of the debris field inside the hold. By analyzing the trajectory of the shrapnel and the way the hull plates were warped, they could calculate the explosive yield. To put it mildly, the energy released was equivalent to several tons of high explosives. This finding gives incredible weight to the theory that the Lusitania was secretly transporting a huge cache of war materials to Britain, possibly including gun cotton or bulk aluminum powder, both highly volatile. You see, a single naval projectile, while damaging, would not have been enough to cause a ship of that size to go under so quickly. The Titanic, after hitting an iceberg that ripped a 300-foot gash in its hull, stayed afloat for over two hours. The Lusitania was gone in 18 minutes. What many overlooked is that the second internal detonation is the only thing that explains this rapid descent. It likely blew a massive hole in the bottom of the ship's hull, allowing thousands of tons of water to flood in uncontrollably. It was a whole different ballgame from the initial impact. This makes the tragedy even more complex. If the ship was indeed carrying military contraband, then under the international rules of the time, Germany had a legitimate reason to see it as a target. This doesn't excuse the terrible loss of civilian life, but it completely changes the narrative. It suggests that the passengers on board were unknowingly being used as human shields for a secret shipment of war supplies. The horrifying footage from the AUV doesn't just show a shipwreck, it reveals a shocking level of deception that had fatal consequences for 1,200 people. But this discovery opens up an even bigger question. A century of lies uncovered. The evidence from the Odyssey AUV is, at the end of the day, undeniable. The LiDAR scans provide the clearest picture yet of what happened in the Lusitania's final moments. The ship wasn't just struck, it was torn apart from within by a massive secondary detonation of secret military supplies. For people watching this, it feels like a mystery solved overnight. This new information forces us to look at a historical event not as a simple tragedy, but as a complex and morally gray chapter of our past. The truth is, the AUV's findings are deeply uncomfortable. They suggest that decisions were made a century ago that placed innocent lives at risk for a strategic advantage in a global conflict. The 1,200 people who perished weren't just victims of an enemy projectile, they were also victims of a dangerous secret their own allies were keeping. The digital ghosts of the Lusitania are finally speaking, and their story is more chilling than we ever imagined. But this confirmed cover-up might only be the first layer of a much deeper, more disturbing truth. 
Let's go deeper into the conspiracy, into the wild theories that this new evidence makes frighteningly plausible. The first and most cynical theory is that the Lusitania was deliberately sacrificed. Think about it. In 1915, Britain was desperate. The war in Europe was a bloody stalemate, and they needed America to join the fight. What many overlooked at the time was the political climate. The United States was fiercely isolationist. It would take something truly horrific, an act of unforgivable barbarism, to change public opinion. What if certain figures in the British Admiralty, perhaps even Winston Churchill himself, saw the Lusitania not as a passenger liner but as the perfect bait? The thing nobody tells you is how many rules were broken. A ship of that importance, carrying that many people through a declared war zone, should have had a naval escort. It didn't. It was ordered to reduce speed to conserve fuel, making it a slower, easier target. And the German embassy had literally taken out newspaper ads in New York, warning people not to travel on the Lusitania, practically announcing their intentions. To some, this doesn't look like a series of mistakes, it looks like a carefully set trap. In this terrifying scenario, the British government knew the ship was a floating bomb, pointed it directly at a waiting German U-boat, and let nature take its course. The loss of 128 American lives was not an accident. It was the price of victory. Another theory suggests an inside job, a saboteur on board. The German torpedo undoubtedly struck the ship, but what if its job was just to create a spark? The secondary explosion that the LiDAR scans confirmed was immense, far more powerful than a simple stock of rifle ammunition should have produced. Some researchers now speculate that the Lusitania was carrying something far more volatile. Experimental explosives or even volatile aluminum powder, a key ingredient for naval bombs. What if a German agent posing as a passenger or crew member was on board with one mission? To make sure that secret cargo detonated, the torpedo impact would have been the perfect cover. It would turn a manageable emergency into an unstoppable catastrophe, ensuring the ship sank in minutes taking its secrets and any chance of an organized evacuation with it. Then there is the strangest theory of all, the possibility of a second submarine. For decades, some survivors insisted they saw the trail of a second torpedo. This was always dismissed as the product of panic and trauma. But in the murky world of wartime intelligence, nothing is impossible. Could a second submarine, perhaps even a British one, have been involved? It sounds insane, but consider the motive, ensuring the complete destruction of evidence. If a simple torpedo strike wasn't enough to sink the ship quickly, a second, more powerful blow would guarantee it went down before any ship could respond and investigate the true nature of its cargo. It would have been the ultimate act of friendly fire, a horrifying decision made in the heat of the moment to protect a national secret. The Lusitania secret is finally out, but does this revelation change who the villains of the story are? Let us know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more dives into the unknown.